You Great guys, you, you were up on stage um, with Juniper, and obviously mobility is at the heart of this announcement. It's the mobile life. Everyone has mobility, obviously more outside the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, than inside the U.S. Um, so first, talk about why you're up there. Let's get that out of the way. Why were you up on stage? Tell us what your uh, involvement in the announcement was. Great. Um, well, British Telecom has multiple plays within the mobility market today. Uh, we're both in the consumer space as well as in the, uh, the enterprise space. You know, our relationship with Juniper is, is multifaceted. You know, we, we do a lot of work with them from a security perspective in general. And, and I think that what was important to us, and certainly Juniper was very interested in our story around you know, how do mobile devices translate into an environment where you traditionally think about network security? And, and what does that mean you know, as consumers are now becoming prosumers and, and trying to bring their experience from the consumer space into the enterprise space? It's a very, it's a fascinating time because you know we've now transcended the the whole idea of using networks and network security as defining the way that we define security strategies, and now we have the devices that are very much dictating that, and so for us, I think there, there's a, a the, the edge has been very great between what is a consumer who brings a smart device into the uh, the corporate environment and how you know, the enterprise wants to deal with those smart devices when they're there. You had mentioned an opportunity, and obviously the, the kind of common theme here is networks, right? You guys have been in the network business mm -hmm. from a consumer standpoint. Obviously, enterprises are in the network business, and some, and some say, and rightly so, they're lagging mm -hmm. in terms of capabilities, mostly tied to applications. Um, can you talk about more of that opportunity? You mentioned it's an opportunity for you guys. Mm -hmm. now, obviously, there's a huge consumerization right. theme going on here. Right. You mentioned that as well. What's the opportunity for you guys now with this kind of environment? Um, to well, hit that gray area, the blurring? It's very much that way. I mean, I think that the, the reality here is that BT has very strong in the consumer space, obviously in the UK. Um, from an enterprise perspective, we've actually been in mobility with Mobile Express for, for well over 15 years. And when you have 1,900 you know, to 2,000 multinationals that are out there, what are the, what's the end user population? They're all consumers, you know, yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And so they're the ones that are putting the pressure on the enterprise to allow for more devices to be introduced. So the opportunity for us is to, to, to gain the, that expertise, not only in the consumer space in the UK, but to be able to embrace the smartphone technology, to embrace what's happening with these devices in the enterprise and offer that as a service. Uh, and, and I think that we see that as, as sort of a continuum of how we're already offering mobile security for enterprises today. Enterprises are clamoring for solutions. And, uh, and so for us, the ability to be able to extend that beyond the network and saying, okay, we're or a branch a, office or exactly, a home office, you know, or a label, whatever you want yeah. to, to now say, okay, we're going to give you the freedom now to, to bring your own devices. We're going to give you um, the ability to be able to offer multiple applications to those end users that that as a service provider, you know, provides value to the enterprise. And again, I think it, it plays very much to the way that we approach enterprises in general today. Yeah. And you know, Ray Ozzy, who just stepped down from Microsoft, wrote the, uh, a letter out to his uh, executive staff and directors, basically declaring an end of an error. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty easy call to make at this right. point, right? I mean, mobile is the defining device in everyone. I mean, just the data the capturing off the mobile devices is unprecedented. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, voice calls and SMS, the old standard, yes. still exists, but now you have a tsunami of diverse data points. How are you guys approaching the data? I mean, obviously there's innovation opportunities to look at gestural data, look at user data, provide mm -hmm. better services. Right. Are you guys taking that data, that data in-house and recycling it out, understanding it? I mean, what's your overall data strategy for your well, business model? Yeah, I, I think that, that from a mobile data perspective, I think that you, you first have to look at you know, what is it that the device is offering. You know, it's enabling applications for, for the organization. Organizations today you know, are trying to now comprehend how a smartphone or a smart device translates into what was predominantly you know, a laptop-driven environment before or a PC-driven environment before. You know, whereas organizations, I think, uh, were sort of looked at smart devices as non-threatening to them, mm -hmm. now there's a sobering reality that, in fact, they are security threats. So you know, the, 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 the value that we can bring to an organization is not only looking at the end user and how do we create a simple experience that's able to transcend you know, what kind of access they're using, however they want to get into the network, but from an organizational perspective, provide a simplicity of, of management information. Because today, we talk to a lot of enterprises that say, okay, I've got four or five different pieces that I'm trying to make into my mobile security yeah, strategy yeah. today across four or five management platforms that translate into four or five subject matter experts they need to have in the organization. Um, that's just not going to cut it. 
you know, it, it, yeah. you, you talk to uh, to David over at IBM, and he'll tell you that you know the the ratio of security experts that they have in their organization to mobile employees is a fraction. And and you, you look at organizations today, and they're, they're constantly they're, under threat. I can imagine yeah. IBM yeah. must get pounded. Oh, absolutely, and you and, guys and, too as well. Yeah, and, and I think that the you know, Again, it's the reality. I think there's that sobering reality that yeah. smartphones, in fact, have become sophisticated enough from an application perspective that they can create the same kind of security threats that we've long seen in the PC and the Internet environment. And it's interesting to see Juniper. It's interesting uh, perspective because what you really have here is in the old way with the PC revolution, the enterprises, they had to crack the code on security. Sure. Um, and, and the mobile... Uh, providers didn't really have that many touch points for access. Right. Yeah, you nailed down all the little touch points you had. Now right. you have a diverse set of touch points. So kind of bringing them both together seems to be a winning formula, both grounded in network security. And I think that it, um, it really lends itself, looking at the devices themselves, you know, the ability to be able to, to have the, the devices amenable to allowing third-party components and not relying on the device itself to be secure enough uh, I, I think is one of the, the, the telling things. It's not going to be just the operating system that's going to secure the environment. It's not going to be you know, the inherent security in the device itself. It's really going to be how an organization looks at the securing of their applications. How do they actually secure their enterprise differently yeah. you know, to allow for those 59% <laughs> of the people who say that, okay, I regularly break into my corporate enterprise using a smart device. Um, yeah, I think that that's, that's very We telling. were just talking with the Forrester guy earlier about um, in the old days, you know, we had a monopoly, you know, standardization, mm -hmm. you know, the Wintel or whatever, yeah. and monopolies. You don't have that anymore. So so there's kind of these different approaches. You kind of have the old school kind of mentality. i got to own it end to end. Um, these devices only. Mm -hmm. Got to use my BlackBerry or this de approved right. device right. Um, versus a more open approach where the network is, is the key. Is there a right or wrong answer? Is there a preferred approach? Um, is there a legacy mindset that will have a small percentage share? Uh, what's your experience and your opinion on that? I think that you know the. Um, I think that the, that we're in, in, we're finally seeing that the paradigm shift away from being able to control the device or define the device to now the policy stage, you know, where organizations are now trying to define not only policy from a, a security or, or from a, a way they want to secure their network, but from a human resources perspective, you know, that now employees need to be educated about their responsibility when they're bringing these devices into the environment. And the more organizations are, are welcoming of how they're going to, to create, you know, the, the kinds of, of baseline security into these devices, um, the more that they're looking at the enterprise security to welcome these, these uh, other devices that are coming in. Uh, it, there's a lot of parallels to the way that um, extranets worked, you know, four yeah, yeah. or five years <laughs> ago, you know, where, where organizations were saying, okay, we can't control the devices that are coming into our enterprise, so what are we going to do? We're going to set up policies based on, uh, on network security. We're going to encrypt everything. We're going to put these master blaster firewalls in place, and that should secure everything. Well, you know, that's not the case. The, you know, the, the nature of devices, the nature yeah, yeah. Of, of security threats now is too sophisticated for that. Are there any bright spots in your mind down the road in terms of areas that are growing, that are emerging? I mean, obviously virtualization is a big part of Absolutely. what we're seeing in the cloud, enabling virtualization on the desktop. Um, obviously, venture capital is always investing in these new kinds of companies that are emerging, mm -hmm. data, Hadoop, mm -hmm. Cloudera, et cetera. So is there any bright spots in your mind out there that you're seeing that are really saying that's a lot of pro prospect with these areas? Oh, I think that the whole, the whole smartphone arena, um, I, I think that that changes really the, the way that organizations are, are going to be thinking about applications is going to change the way that they're thinking about the design of their applications. Um, what excites me is hearing organizations talk in terms of, of app stores. You know, they're talking in terms of consumer terms of the things that, that have already changed the way the consumers look at you know, the way that they want to interact with, with data, the way that they want to communicate with each other. Uh, I think that that, ex that creates an exciting opportunity that organizations, you know, from a, a security perspective, they're going to change the way that they design not only the way that they secure their, their enterprise, but also how they, they change the design of their applications. Uh, that creates a huge opportunity. Um, it allows for uh, organizations to now look at, you know, what is the kind of expertise they need to have. And, and you know, as I said before, you know, this, is a, this is a journey. You know, there's yeah. no, uh, enterprises don't have a whoosh, moment where they say, okay, goodness, that's done. We don't have to worry about security. It's anymore. a level set. It's a reset, if you will. It is. And, and grow with new 
demands. Absolutely, and, and that's exactly what we're seeing out there. So I think that that, that just in itself, you know, the organizations that can provide that kind of expertise and, and provide that sort of or the reality of what's yeah. actually happening out there, they're the ones that are going to the most benefit from the changes. Yeah, you guys, you're in, you're in an interesting spot, obviously, because being having the two client bases and obviously the, in the technology that you're inter- interacting with. Um, what's your advice or opinion and philosophy or angle on the consumerization of IT? In particular, uh, obviously, there's no real debate. Consumerization of IT and consumerization of technology is right. everywhere. Mm-hmm. How do companies who aren't there yet, who are even not in the first step of the journey, who are old, siloed ITs, how does a company become a consumer company? Because mm-hmm. it's pretty much agreed upon that they got to be like the a consumer company. Gonna happen. Yeah, so, okay, how does a big technology company like Juniper or like anyone else or a bank or financial institution or a healthcare company, how do they become a consumer company? Well, I, th- I think the, the, the first thing they need to take a look at, and, and it's no different than how I think that, that all organizations that have been successful you know, approach mobility. First, understand the applications. You know, understand the application environment. What are you trying to do? You know, what is the role of, uh, of applications in running your business? And you know, the second is where do, you know, where do those applications become, um, become mobile threats and where do they become a mobile benefit for the organization? You know, are there certain applications you want to make available to them? Then the third aspect is from a, uh, an overall delivery perspective. How do you want to deliver those applications? And that's where, you know, where virtualization can come into play for them. Uh, do they want to make those virtualized applications so that they're not having to worry about you know, putting too much intelligence or putting too much control down at the end device? Uh, and then finally, <clears throat> looking at their, their overall security, because I think that organizations, are, I'm seeing that organizations fall into to two camps. Either they're too lax with their security and create vulnerabilities for, for mobile devices coming in, or they're too strict. And, and they're saying, okay, we've got uh, a variety of, uh, of uh, controls that we put in place. We, we're banning the use of smartphones in our environment. Um, I think that that's too old school thinking, you know, that mm-hmm. organizations need to be thinking a little bit uh, more about how they can actually embrace these devices and, and less so about how do I restrict them because people are going to find a way. Yeah. Is there a proof point you can share with um, the folks out there about uh, a use case that you're, you're proud of in terms of what you guys have done uh, in your business that have, has kind of changed the game in this area. Is there anything, I mean, obviously the confidential information is out there, but is sure. there anything you can share? I, I think that, you know, one of the things that we've, we've recognized over the years is that um, delivering technology to enterprises is, is certainly something that you can build a business on, but being able to sustain that really comes down to what kind of expertise you can bring behind it. You know, we've seen that uh, with Mobile Express, professional services has played a big part in why very large corporations, we're talking about organizations that have 50, 60, 70,000 end users that are mobile. You know, how does that come into, to, uh, into their broader enterprise? You know, being able to bring that kind of expertise to, uh, to their organization, it's, it's a game changer. You know, it allows for organizations, one, to be able to continue to adapt to the changes that are happening out there, but at the same time, allows them to focus on what we want them to focus on, which is, is on the applications in their business. And, and I think that you find that, that most organizations you know, today are, are very much you know, interested in how they can embrace technology and at the same time want to make sure that there's someone out there that understands how that technology can, can play into their enterprise. Is cloud and mobile hand in glove, are they together? Not quite yet. You know, I, I think that... that uh, I think that virtualization is going to become a response for organizations um, to how they deal with security. Uh, I think that it allows for them the convenience of being able to, to segment applications and content away from the mobile device, so there, there's an opportunity there. Um, yet, I, I still see that the approach that organizations are taking is they're not quite sure yet what the end user population is that they want to have leveraging these virtualized applications. So I think that we're going to see over they're time. They're still unsure. They're still kind of bit boiling out the use cases, right? Right. I, I think and there's obviously some technical issues as well. Yeah, small ones. Small ones, <laughs> especially if you're looking at a global deployment. You know, I think that, yeah. that organizations are, uh, there's still architecture changes that they have to go through on their own applications before they can even look to virtualize them. On the user experience side, as we talked about earlier, um, you know, there's been 
I mean, virtual desktop has been talked about for years. Sure. It's next year. It's, this is the year of virtual right. desktop. Yep. I mean, it's an edge device. You're talking about yep. mobility. I mean, at, at VMworld, I mean, we talked a lot about that, and they actually changed it from VDI to end-user computing. Or, mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess that's a good way to, to position it. But it really is an opportunity for whether, you know, healthcare doctors or whatever. Is that a reality? I mean, is there a long way to go with VDI or virtualization at the desktop? I think that there there is. Um, it's It continues to be... Um, niche in terms of, of the application appeal for it right now. I think that you're finding certain verticals find more a more of a natural use for it. it. Again, it comes down to the devices itself. And, and does the device provide for them a platform, a stable platform combined with, with the access, combined with the security to allow for those applications to work effectively? Uh, and I think that there are, are architecture changes now that are happening within closed environments that are, are helping uh, organizations to, to better take advantage of a virtual desktop, um, but yeah, I still think that we're a ways away from it being really a mainstream adoption because you know, t- today most of the applications or, or that are getting driven by mobile devices today still center around messaging. They still center yeah. around you know, essentially architectures that have been in place for you know, 15, 20 years. So you know, I think that there is a, you know, there's a certain degree of that. We're here with Mark Patterson from BT, Global Footprint, um, been in the business for a long time, sees the changes, uh, recognizes the consumerization trend and uh, applying technology. Um, content. Um, one of Kevin Johnson's slides talked about, obviously, devices, mm-hmm. you know, any device having the software on it. But he talked about content. I was a sharing, social networking kind of thing to mm-hmm. it. But t- the content was a big part of his slide. You guys obviously see a lot of content right. coming in off the mobile devices. Um, What's the internal mindset at BTN or other uh, providers around over the top and these mm-hmm. new content sources? You got to harness it. Is it is data the key? Uh, how are you guys looking at the, that kind of the content model? Well, it's long interesting. tail of applications coming on. I, it's, that's, I think that that's exactly. I think that you're you're finding right now that um, you know, organizations are, are struggling with what kind of content they want to control, and you know what is the, for example, what's the role of social social networking? Within, uh, within the enterprise and, and how far do you go in terms of enabling that because that creates a, a huge vulnerability for an organization um, if, they, if they go too far in terms of being able to embrace con- consumerized or consumer driven uh, content within their environment. I think it creates for organizations the, um, you know, I think we, we see a resurgence in hosting now you know, because that whole model has changed uh, in, in the sort of virtualized environment. Uh, where does content, where should content be delivered, where should content actually reside? You know, where is where is that the single place where it should reside? Uh, I think that organizations are and who to owns it, right? That. Exactly, and so uh, you know, I think that we are seeing with um, with organizations right now that uh, they're increasingly looking to try to move content uh, for for the sake of, of making it available, making sure that it's under control, moving it more into the cloud, uh, and, and less so looking at a. Uh, a model in which they just let it, let it go, widespread. I'm getting the, the wrap-up hook here, but a couple more questions. It was a great conversation. really enjoy this. This is fantastic. Uh, uh, see, cloud and mobile I, you know, will come together at some point, but you know, compute has been out there. A lot of people are saying, and we've been talking about storage, mainly mm-hmm. because you can get compute anywhere. I mean, sure. compute is almost like right. you know, pork bellies, right? Yes. You can get them <laughs> anywhere, right? Um, but, I mean, it's a commodity. Um, so storage isn't though storage is a different animal and mm-hmm. how are you guys dealing with big data than storage i mean you need low latency at the edge mm-hmm. you need robust user experience mm-hmm. but you need access to the storage any um vision opinions or angle on the storage I, I, again a lot of of with storage is it's more than than just being able to to have a wide scale ability to actually have capacity for that a lot of it has to come with the network design itself yeah, I think that what we're seeing right now, uh, especially as, as organizations, uh, enterprises are looking at the design of not only security, but more importantly, their backbone networks, and the ability to be able to deliver that. Um, you know, I think that that's what's, what's driving so much of the, the, almost like the replication of the internet model now in, in the private space. Why, is it, why are organizations looking for higher capacity, being able to create more intelligence around how they're actually transmitting this data? Uh, I think that, that there are changes to the way that organizations are designing their core networks so that they can make content more distributed, so that they can make, um, they can... Scaling out, if you will. Exactly. 
you know, and, and I think that for multinationals, the ability to be able to, to make that available, to be able to look at the nature of how they run their business and what content is relevant to various parts of their business. You, know, you do see a, a degree of segmentation that's happening out there, which is, uh, I, th- I think, again, trans- Solid into- state drives big innovation, Absolutely. caching layer. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, we're here with Mark Patterson. Really, the big story here is consumerization. Uh, BT is obviously a big player at the in the mobility area and enterprise. They touch the consumer. They have to deliver technology securely. New apps are emerging. Thanks so much for joining us inside the cube. And uh, we're here at the Juniper event, changing the world forever, the internet forever. Juniper, up. Oh, that's not Juniper. Juniper is defending your data. <laughs> <laughs> your uh, mobile device and your mobile life. So uh, couldn't help but dig in the other one, uh, the other guys go. over there. Thanks for coming <laughs> Thank inside you. the queue. Appreciate it. Great pleasure. Okay.